north of the Reaping Fields, Ferranic Coast, day 480300. Legionary forces hold the south, including Jade Cove, while Sevish troops hold the northern towns. Arriving at the most forward warden position in the middle thirds of Ferranic, an influx of retreating wardens themselves arrive. They have just fallen back from a successful colonial assault on the warden outpost south, formerly the most forward warden position. The troops are hardly energetic. Tell me, chaps, how long have you been out here in the field? Three days now. Three days? What's it been like? Tiring. It's hell. I haven't even slept in reality. Sergeant Peak Human Performance of the ARC describes the action. Tell me, what's the situation like here out in Ferranic Coast? We just lost um, an encampment down south southwest from here, from an AC car and howitzers. And how many colonials did you encounter out there? They, um, they didn't really have that much, but the AC, they had enough to uh, take out the encampment. Thanks, and you got overwhelmed? Yeah, basically. So then your outpost is here approximately 50 meters uh, up the, uh, maybe 100 meters up the, up the ways. Tell me, do you, do you think you'll be able to hold this position? Um, with the, with the foxholes up there, to our south share. Very well, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> but despite the disappointing encounter, the chaps somehow find the energy to continue. The correct answer was, with the aid of Callahan, anything is possible. All hail Callahan. All hail Callahan! Ha uh -huh. Shortly thereafter, two Warden armored cars arrive, and together with about a dozen infantry, the decision is made to immediately launch a counterattack to retake the position. Charge! Oh, yeah, support the infantry! Support the infantry! Get the tank line, get the tank line! Right, you got the armor built! What? The collies are completely caught unawares by the direct assault and fall hey. back some 100 meters southwest okay. back to their outpost on the outskirts of the colonial held Husk Hollow. In an attempt to make use of the wide open fields, the warden armored cars split up, each with a cohort of okay. infantry. Come on, infantry, stay with us, stay with us, inf infantry, oh fuck, let's go, let's go. But due to the night time, one is destroyed by a quick collie flank. Yo, cover us for repairing! Cover us for repairing! The surviving members of the assault manage to reach the colonial outpost to the point where they are nearly touching it. But the pressure from foxholes, a howitzer, and a fresh wave of collie defenders force the wardens to regroup. Right. Skeeper, can you get everyone to stack up on us, mate? We're gonna need everyone to stack up on us, yeah? Alright boys, get next Absolutely. to the car, everyone to the car. Gentlemen, we're gonna stack up and we're gonna push, come on. We need right. more infantry though, we need more infantry. Right Try and get some more. Oh, no, 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 no. Already going. A tad bit of tit for tat, with no real gains. But scenes such as this one are destined to replay here in the middle thirds of Ferranic. For the press corps, this is Dr. Oliver Brolin Ponsonby Esquire. Saltbrook Channel, Endless Shore, day 49, 10 hundred hours. After fighting off the colonial presence, warden forces have managed to secure and fortify the entirety of Saltbrook Channel proper. I came across 2nd Lieutenant Seeker of the Warden Navy on the channel crossing, who was busy erecting shipping containers as an impromptu wall channel side. Well, how intense has the action been here in Saltbrook? Sort of not right, right now, not really. Um, it used to be really um, intense when before we took it, we tried to um, circle uh, circle the city. But from what I, but from, but from what I hear here right now, um, there is a lot of action going south from here in the battlefield. And how confident are you that you'll be able to hold the town? I'm s I'm certain that we will hold it. We are fortifying it properly. You can see um, on the eastern bridge, it is really fortified. Crossing into the southern end of the city, a bustle of infantry and armored cars pack the streets. The outgoing traffic, another wave of defenders ready or not to hit the front. The incoming wave, combat engineers looking for supplies and wounded looking for mercy. Alright, okay. boys, this way. Hey, follow us directly. Follow, 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 follow. Follow the way, chaps. 
Stay behind the, the, the uh, armored vehicle. Cover. Plenty of warden armored cars out in the field. A dozen, two dozen warden infantry here. We are on the southern edge. There's one en enemy right here. The southern right entrance here. into Saltbrook Channel, the southern half of the town. Is that gas? Oh, fuck. <laughs> what if you realize? Uh, that's no gas. That's just a grenade. Oh. That's <laughs> another grenade. <laughs> oh, no. At the southern end of the city, the battle rages on. The colonial position is less than 100 meters away, south of the Warden Line, which itself has been fortified with several layers of sandbags, foxholes, and light pillboxes. I spoke with First Warrant Officer Pete Sapai of the 128th Artillery Regiment, who was busy with battlefield construction, about the current situation and the Warden retreat from weathered landing south of our current position. Tell me, do you think uh, you'll be able to hold this uh, line of defenses on the southern edge of town? Uh, very likely so. Uh, even if we were pushed back a, a few hours ago from, what you call it, land again? Weathered land. Weathered landing, south, so, about 100 meters south of here, yes. Other than that, well, uh, you could say, I don't know, probably divert resources from wood barns since they seem to be uh, doing already well themselves. I don't see, any, I don't know why they're kind of clamoring for more resources. How long have you been uh, fortifying the position here, this, uh, the southern line? Uh, since weathered landing uh, started to fall, you could say. Not fall, but more like uh, crippled. Right, right. And how long ago was that? Like an hour ago. Maybe About an three. hour ago. With the colonial howitzer firing awfully close to our position throughout our conversation, I finally pointed out the obvious. Whose howitzers are that? Is that uh, Warden or Colonial? That would be uh, Colonial. There's no Warden ones currently. But he didn't seem to mind. They're not really skilled with those things. They're scattering, they're fighting infantry instead of the ACs that are much more of a threat than anything else. But, but as more fall victims of the blasts and the dwindling of supplies at the very front, subdued panic begins to fester which makes its way up to Saltbrook when some men rotate back up the line. How, how is it? I'm, 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 it's, you know, I just came here. To the south. Very intense. Okay, let's get going. Rock, can you give me? Let's move! Yeah, boy! In an attempt to bolster that defense, that urgency sweeps Saltbrook, inadvertently calling a wave of sievish infantry and armored cars to the south. Staff Sergeant Jack 27, I'm Dr. Ponsonby of the Press Corps. How successful do you think this assault will be on the southern colonial position? Pretty amazing. I, I've stickied three armored cars so far. Do it you think it cost me about six lives? Do you think you've been a you think you'll be able to outmaneuver that howitzer oh, that's been yeah. firing on the line? I don't think they're well supplied. They've only been shooting every once every five minutes. Uh, it's, it's been pretty on and off. The barrage once every five minutes, I see. Have you encountered it's, any? It's so you said you've said you've encountered Colody alarm cars and you've destroyed multiple yes. of them. Yes, we've destroyed at least two, maybe wounded one. I'm not sure if we got away or not. I see. Where, where was your current estimate of the colonial position here? The south and that passageway, east west. When I first got on, they were all the way up to the wall in Saltbrook, and we pushed them back this far. The wall? Are you talking about the river, or to, like we which wall were? Yeah, the, uh, the little. The little oh, ramp. Back there. Oh, I see, I see. Yes, the entrance to the southern half of the town. I see. Yep, gotcha. Okay, well, very much. Thank you so much for your time. We'll continue to cover it. <laughs> like a critical mass, over 30 troops and at least three armored cars charge out of Saltbrook, break through no man's land, and overrun the colonial position at Weathered Landing, destroying an encampment as well as capturing the howitzer and multiple logistics vehicles. Staff Sergeant Kais. Dr. Ponsonby of the Press Corps, I'm assuming you stole this, uh, crane. Ah, uh, yes, it was just down the road. And was it already unlocked? Yes, they didn't bother locking it, it was just there for me. With the immediate threat to Saltbrook so profoundly eliminated, the Wardens decide to keep going, eventually taking out two more colonial outposts further south by southwest of Weathered. Sergeant Longford, Dr. Ponsonby of the Press Corps, how would you describe the current action so far and the action you've seen? Uh, it's quite crazy, dude, it's quite crazy. I'm out of Take the initiative. 
taken heavy losses, but we're pushing slowly but surely. It's a costly effort. The third colonial outpost has been destroyed. This one on the bridge, mouth of the bridge leading from the creek. With the wardens gaining so much territory, it becomes apparent the logistics cannot bring up the line fast enough to hold it all. Uh, I don't think we can sustain it, though, no, to be honest with you. One serious push by the collies and we'll get pushed right back. Copy that, mate. You're going to have to hold this position. Honest opinion. But with the buffer zone around Saltbrook established, the colonials will be hard-pressed to threaten the city of Salt anytime soon. For the press corps, this is Dr. Oliver Brolin Ponsonby, Esquire. This is reporter Potato for the press corps here on Sickle Hill. Uh, today I'm with Officer Cadet Christoph, who has been here fighting for at least, uh, what was it, three, four days? Almost a week, yes. So, well, for the questions, uh, uh, where were you when the fighting in Sickle Hill uh, flared up? I was actually on the other side of Faranak Coast, uh, preparing for an operation against Sickle Hill, er, not Sickle Hill, against Husk Hollow. So, uh, what was the situation at Sickle Hill when you arrived? Well, after we received the, uh, message for, well, anything that they could use to help, for help, um, it was awful, really. The entire line was in shambles. The entire, the entire warden line was, uh, damn near about ready to fall. And, uh, when me and my men arrived, if I recall correctly, it was, uh, it was what is left of my division, the Mad 13th, and uh, a little bit of a few other uh, grunts that we had picked up along the way, and it was just a mess. We had uh, we had gotten there right at uh, one of the uh, quiet moments, and thankfully we were able to get in position right before an, a, a literal tidal wave of colonials slammed against us. Good lord. You say human waves, but the... Uh... What what were they up against? Like, what did they even have? Like, what was the technology? What weapons did they have? Or did they have any, like, uh, armored support? Any vehicles? They did have some armored support, but most of them were armed with, uh... Actually, now that, uh, now that I actually have time to think about it, there were many of the Colonials armed with storm rifles. And they were very intent on trying to break through our line. They, uh, attempted to bring up a, uh... I believe it was two armored cars and a half track as well, but uh, we did have uh, anti-tank measures and we made quick work of them. But uh, we were uh, we were outnumbered at least three to one at Sickle Hill. After all this fighting, like how did the tide turn from just holding out in Sickle Hill to you know actually pushing to Apollo's landing? Well. Honestly, the entire battle seemed like it was a losing fight, but we weren't going to let those Colonials take an inch from us without a fight. Uh, Second Lieutenant Phobos and myself, who took it upon ourselves to inspire the men and remind them why they are fighting. Well, each one of them valiantly held their ground and defended against ev everything that the Colonials threw at us. I remember there was a machine gunner right next to me at my position. Uh, he was shot several times, actually, uh, and he he just continued firing and uh, screaming obscenities and curses at the colonials as they kept coming in droves at us. Good lord! So once you got to Apollo's landing, like how was the fighting there? It seems that there's a bunch of buildings there. Were they all like uh, garrison? Were they feet for the taking or what? Every single building was garrisoned. Every single window in every house in that city had a rifle poking out of it. We had to clear out each and every street, each corner, each house had to be damn near leveled. If, if we're looking at casualty figures, uh, what would be the estimate? <sighs> I try not to think about that. I know casualties on both sides in Farinac Coast have been incredibly steep, as Farinac Coast has seen probably some of the worst fighting in this, but I'm certain the Colonials suffered more than we did. I made sure of it. Alright then, uh, that's all the questions I have, so do you have any uh, final words you'd like to say? 
I'd like to address my warden brothers and sisters who are fighting on the front lines, if I may. All right. Brave men and women of the warden army, hear my voice. Never underestimate your power. Never doubt it. It is you that stems the tide of the colonial invaders that flows upon our righteous shores. It is you, in your countless thousands, who smash aside the Messian dogs. It is you, in your infinite courage, who crush the colonials and grind their sympathizers into the dirt beneath their boots. Soldiers of Siva, gather your arms and steel yourselves. Fight. Fight in the name of our liberty. Fight in the name of our great leader, Callahan. Never count the days. Never count the miles. Count only the amount of colonials you have killed. Kill the colonial. This is your mother's prayer. Kill the colonial. This is the cry of your sievish earth. Kill the colonial. This is your sacred duty. Never waver. Never relent. Kill. Death to any and all colonial invaders. Good lord, I asked you for some final words and you gave me a goddamn speech, alright. That was... Hey, was uh, it good though? <laughs> was it good? Yeah. Alright, alright. So that was Office Cadet Christoph. Uh, I suppose you'll be going back to Apollo Standing. And for the recording, I'm Reporter Potato. Warded influence in the Deadlands grows southward, with a forward position on the pockmarked terrain known simply as the Pits. Nestled about halfway between Warden held abandoned ward to its north and the colonial town of the Salt Farms to its south, both sides continue skirmishes around the sector to gain the upper hand, but the main road that runs straight through the area is the primary no man's land. I spoke with Officer Cadet Clutchmaster at the beleaguered warden outpost in the pits, with fighting taking place only 20 meters away. What's your current take of the situation here in the pits? You've got colonials flanking around trying to cut off the increasingly stranded position and very much f intense fighting with possibly high numbers of colonials coming from the salt farms. How would you, how would you gather the situation? <sighs> well, Dr. Panamsvi, it's not a very simple. You have to understand that our logistical analysis of the situation is deemed hostile. So we're going to need to have a trust among our comrades and uh, just fight forward and hold this position until we can get better defense on both roads coming from west and the north. You, you called it hostile. How, how, how would you... Can you go into detail about that? We can, we can actually determine the colonial strategy by seeing how many uh, the builders they the have. Let's go to the death zone! And currently there are no builders, so you can see that there's some disorganization on their front. However, on our front, we also lack builders, so you can see that the situation is very tense and stressed. Hostile. Are you worried about that flank, you know, that very thin uh, layer of defense between here and Sunhaven Gateway? I do see that, and I have experienced some hostile activity in those uh, back lines. However, I trust my comrades to make sure that it stays clear for the logistics that come in, and therefore build defenses uh, that links our logistical routes from Sunhaven. Investigating the situation about this so-called hostile logistics, I began to journey back towards abandoned ward where the logistics was supposedly emanating from. Along the way, I managed to receive a ride from Lieutenant Colonel Black Sabbath in his captured colonial lorry. My name's Dr. Ponsonby. I'm with the press corps doing a story here in and around the pits. Tell me, what has logistics oh, been okay. like? Uh, actually, how long have you been uh, doing logistics for the pits? Let me start there. Uh, well, I, I do a, pretty much, I run the factory and I do a bit of everything and put stuff wherever they need to go. Um, basically, I'm 99% Lodgy and I just try to help out people if possible. I'm actually running a workshop for a lot of new players if they want to learn. Hey, you may as well jump in, man. He stopped his lorry to pick up a lone rifleman, and it wouldn't be the last time. In fact, as we rode back and forth along the route between the factories at Abandoned Ward and the forward position at the pits, I noticed Black Sabbath was stopping every other minute to help someone along the way. Hey, you want a lift, Prophet? Would you like a lift, mate? I fight? need a fucking truck, my friend. I need a truck. Oh, I can help you get one. Um, we need to deliver ahead. shorts to the pits. I already did, man. Um, I've got another order almost done, so jump in and I'll, I'll take you. 
I just do, gotta refine the scrap that's been in there for a while. Here, Hats, jump back in, I'll find your truck, man. Worst case scenario, I'll get you 100 B-mats and some fuel. Oh, there's one. No, no, you know me, I'm happy to help, man. It appeared that Black Sabbath was the primary supply of ammunition and material to the warden position. Meaning every moment he stopped to help was a delay in shirts, B-mats, and rifle magazines. A moral quandary if I had ever seen one. But the war waits for no charity, and the pressure to deliver remains. Um, I've got an order almost done in about a minute. I can run that down. Yeah, we're we're already down shirts. to 19. It might run out. How has logistics been uh, running between abandoned ward and the pits? Uh, it's oh, since the update because we've got a lot of redundancies and people not knowing what they need to do. But that's okay. They just need teaching, not abusing. That's my mentality. And how long have you been running logistics? Uh, well, I just had to get some sleep. But other than that, I did a 47-hour stint of drinking and logistics. And that was quite fun. But I, it got sleep-deprived and, you know, then people were trolling. And, yeah, it's good fun. But I see. Is How are you feeling today? Um, you know, it's much better. But I've just been trying to stop this... Um, stockpile up so the dark hours are about well they've ended now we've got people logging on so i mused as to how he was able to maintain composure amidst the eternal list of things to do so then tell me what's your logistics philosophy how do you stay sane amid all this pressure to deliver oh i'm i'm an alcoholic okay, okay. glad to see a fellow <laughs> right here what's your drink of choice chap Guinness, mate. Guinness, fucking I. <laughs> Good bloody choice. That's all right. How many how many drinks do you usually consume while you're out in a logistics run? Uh, it depends how how long I I'm doing it. Per run, I suppose uh, a quarter a drink, if that. Um, because a logistics run only takes maybe ten minutes if you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And how many in a single session? Oh, well, it depends how long I stay up. Um. For instance, 40, your last one was 47 hours, right? Yeah, I, I went for, uh, what was it? I think it was about 48 beers, yeah. It's about a pint an hour, that's incredible. Yeah, 1.5 standard drinks each, uh, Australian standard drinks, obviously. No, that's, that's what the bloodstream in, like, one standard drink goes down that, so you just need to keep around that to maintain your buzz, or, Hello. you know... Um, just a little bit more. It depends if you want to go to sleep. It's Without a doubt, a single person creating and running supplies is not enough to sustain an intense 20 plus infantry fight. And make no mistake, there were others attempting to rally logistics forth. Indeed, other clashes in the region may have forced other supply personnel towards more pressing matters leaving Black Sabbath the only one consistently attached to the pits. How, what's your advice to new recruits and how to get into the logistics aspects of the war? It, it's hard. It, it depends what type of logistics you want. I'm mainly mid-range to front-line to front line logistics. Uh, but if anyone wants logistics training, I've got an op running. Feel free to join. If you have a mic, it's better, but if not required, I will set you up with a truck and all the equipment you need to know, and answer any questions, sir. Regardless of what the true case is, his ability to juggle supply runs, helping new recruits, and lending a ride to others, including this reporter, is commendable. I think it's vital that we um, teach these new players how to do logistics, and it puts an easier strain on me, so I can actually go to the front line at some point in my life. Um, for more than an hour and go, all right, we need this, this, and this, and all right. Um, I put the request in, no one's coming, I guess I'll just do it myself. Although well, his long drinking binges, not so much. But then again, I don't have much room to talk. Well, thank you so much for your time. This has been very enlightening. Lieutenant Colonel Black Sabbath, do appreciate it. Thank you for your time. No worries. Um, enjoy your day. For the Press Corps, this is Dr. Oliver Boland Ponson, B. Esquire. 
morning, afternoon, or evening. I'm Jeffrey Jennings, and joining me here at Press Corps World Headquarters is War Corps. Uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, yeah, anyways, we were talking about, the, gonna talk about the, uh, Abandoned Ward Wall. So, yes, um, a And you are a warden, just, just to, just to clarify. Yes, yes, I am a warden. Alright, go ahead. Anyways, uh, by a womb raider, by the name of Womb Raider, decided that we decided to build a wall in the Abandoned War because we were having a, a bit of a hard time holding the Colonials off in the 30s days back in the early war, so... We built the wall, that's what we did, and somebody had the bright idea of putting field machine guns on top of the wall, and what do you know, it actually worked, it actually managed to work. So you had field machine guns, how many field machine guns on top of this wall, first of all, actually, first question, what was this wall made of? Like, the regular the wall, walls? The wall was made of containers, and there were three field machine guns. And how did you access the the top of the containers? You have to get the real sweet spot. <laughs> At first, we actually had to kill people in order to get the field machine guns on the roof. But as I found out, you actually didn't need to do this. You just needed to find the sweet spot. And how, however, the downside, you need to be extremely delicate with these field machine guns, in fact. Very, very delicate little things. Now, uh, the, the, what was the positioning of this wall? There are multiple entrances into the city. There are multiple entrances into the city. So, uh, there's two bridges uh, south, two bridges north, and then I believe a mountain pass on the southeast, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we, actually, we actually built another several walls to the sides to prevent them from coming in in the early war, and mostly infantry held them off there. The, the field machine guns freed up the infantry to help defend those points, but the main attacks were actually coming from the southern point of the bridge. The very southern point, in fact, of Abandoned Ward. So, That's south, south Abandoned Ward, colonials yeah. were coming up on your position, so you built a wall of shipping containers and put three field machine guns on top of it to deter air. That would be correct. That would how, be correct, Jeffrey. How long did this position last for you? Well, as you can see, it lasted up until recently. How, how is recently? Uh, do you have an um, approximate day? So I currently, mean, it's, as we're talking, it's 239. Mm -hmm. I believe Abandoned Ward fell somewhere between 220, a lot sometime, or day 220 something. So about when Abandoned Ward fell most recently? Yeah. To the Colonials. That's, okay. We can yeah. corroborate that on foxholestats.com. Mm -hmm. Looks like here the town hall was lost on day 234. No doubt the Colonials had already pushed into the town by then. The wall was destroyed several times by howitzers, but however, every time we rebuilt it. However, I wasn't there of Abandoned Ward at its final moments, hence it, I could have assembled the wall, but we, well, we couldn't have assembled the wall because... They would have had, um, what is it? Um, I mean, more explosive materials like uh, high uh, RPGs, uh, satchel charges, HE grenades. And this was early war. We're talking, Jeffrey. So they didn't have much. This wall would not last against field artillery or any other material. Anything in the late war, mainly for early war. So it's safe to say that as soon as fire support in earnest began to be introduced into the conflict, uh, the fortification was doomed. Yeah, uh, we had a we had a difficult time once uh, howitzers were being set up by the colonials of maintaining the wall. We eventually put them south, and we had to abandon position. We had to move some containers, but however, if we actually didn't do anything. If the Colonials kept it on a basis, the wall would have stood. I am guaranteeing that. This position was mostly centered around the South Central Bridge into Abandoned Ward. The Sunhaven Gateway, essentially. Now, did they at any point attempt to flank 
both around the town completely or in the southwest bridge or in the southeast uh, 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 fort, uh, rock there formation? Were, uh, there were actually a few times where they, tr um, second wall, we actually built the second wall because the first one got originally destroyed by howitzer fire. Uh, we built, rebuilt the, we put the FMGs back on the wall. They tried to come over the mountain. They tried to jump off the mountains into abandoned ward, but every time they got, because they were either got stuck in barbed wire or stuck behind the sandbag walls we built there. So you were, you were this prepared for all the flanks? Yes, correct, Jeffrey. And how far did, any, so aside from that, a few colonials managing to physically get into the city, even though shortly cut down afterwards, Along the, the position on the wall, did the Colonials get? Were they, any of them able to make it across the bridge and actually touch the shipping containers? I mean, I mean, maybe a few, but as far as I know, no, I haven't seen any. any. And it was all infantry? Any armored yeah. cars? Uh, there were actually a few armored cars. I believe we actually destroyed two or three armored cars while at it, across the, the bridge. Because we disabled one... We managed to disable about a few armored cars. Uh, repair, they repaired one. I believe we destroyed one, and we disabled another. And once they built it back up, they had to retreat. Okay. Let's see. Sorry, this is just fascinating. <laughs> mm -hmm. What What was the initial idea for uh, using shipping containers uh, position? As a fortification in which to fire on. Well, we figured. Well, we figured it would actually be an excellent position as number one, the, it, it was higher than the sandbag walls, for once, so that could give us enough one advantage. And number two, for the FMGs, that would actually be a greater advantage, seeing that the large volumes of fire coming from the FMGs, which is, you know. 200 rounds per magazine in an FMG of 14 millimeter rounds. That that was devastating to Colonial infantry. I'm betting that's why they uh, took the bulk of casualties in trying to take a band ward. Now, by your estimates, your estimates, how many did you manage to to kill from this position? Uh, two to three hundred within the span of 50 minutes. And this and this uh, position lasted for about a hundred plus days. Yes. I mean, granted, we did push them out of Deadlands, and they did come back, and they did come back with satchel charges, RPGs, etc. We may hold them off for the early war, but this may actually work for late war. But you'd have to be more intelligent with it. You'd have to be more cautious, for example. I, so, yeah, this wall was actually very, very effective. You need to own the zone in terms of fire support. You need that. You need to just shut down any howitzer or field artillery as soon as they pop up. Well, yeah, we had about six. Uh, the second wall, I believe we had six howitzers uh, directing fire on their... The second wall, we had six howitzers firing upon another. How four of them got destroyed. That's the unfortunate part. Mainly because they were clumped up all together. Where'd you get supplied from? I imagine you did a lot of ammunition on top of those containers. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, we actually managed to build up the factory at Abandoned War to supply us with a large amount of FMG ammunition. And how many people did you have running just ammunition? Um... I believe around, I believe actually one of the FMG crew members actually was doing it, I believe two, because we actually didn't need to move the FMGs for the most part, we only needed the gunners, and that's pretty much it. Uh, staff, drunken contender, Lieutenant Honey DQ, uh, first warrant officer, Little Dragon, Captain Womb Raider, second Spitfire of the Anzac Regiment, and Private Coda. As well as me, Officer Cadet War Corp, and... And it looks like Le uh, Colonel Black Sabbath supplying you. Yeah, Lieutenant Colonel Black Sabbath was the one who supplied us, so props to that guy. I see. Can, do you know the day in which uh, the this was taken? Day 41. This, this would be day 41. Either day 41 or day 43. I didn't notice this before. 
the bridge is destroyed. So, oh, oh, so yeah. the, colonials, been... the Colonials kept coming even though the bridge was destroyed and you had three field machine guns pointed at that bridge at all times. Mm -hmm. And at it, no it, point... You need a lot of guts to do that. <laughs> bravery indeed, but at no point... Did they ever think about not doing that? I have no idea why. They just kept assaulting and assaulting us. Okay. I mean, I swear they were like they were like cockroaches. You just squish one and ten more show up. However, we did eventually repel their attacks. We did rebuild the bridge and we did drive them back forward across the bridge. And we managed we managed to kick their ass quite a bit, just to say the least. All right. Anything else you want to leave us here with? Um. Thanks to Captain Womb Raider for the idea of putting the field machine guns on the walls. Props, guy. Alright, thank you very much. Officer Cadet War Corps, duly yep. appreciated.